There are many great mods out there, and some of them deserve to be built in, like Orbital Survey by Falky. This mod allows you to scan and map your planets, giving you a lot of information and a lot of power. And as a new channel, this is where I ask, please subscribe, like, share, comment, and together we can give that algorithm something to think about. Currently, all of the scanning is done with antennas. Along with them, you can find the information as to what scan type they take and what altitude they prefer to scan from. Just to note, depending on which body you're scanning and its size and what type of scan you want to run, you will need to be at different altitudes. Building a survey satellite can't be easier. All you need is your standard probe core, lots of batteries. I usually tend to give them 2,000 power minimum and three to four circular solar cells. In this case, I'm putting in a collapsible dish antenna and a drive section just to allow us to get us into the proper orbits. For you to be able to finish your orbital scans, you do need to get into a polar orbit, so you do need to account for having some extra fuel to do that. As well as you are going to need all of that extra power from those batteries and solar cells that we put on it in order to not only just scan, but transmit that data back to get your science. Once you are in orbit, to activate the scanning function, all you need to do is turn on the enable from within the parts manager. With the map window, you can zoom in, zoom out. You can also rescale it to get a larger view. You also have a craft tracking button that will keep the map centered over your craft if you are zoomed in. If you are playing in exploration mode and are trying to obtain science, it does provide science for every 25% of a scan. So at 25, 50, 75, and 100, you will get a science package that you can transmit back. This, however, does take a fair amount of power to transmit, so again, you do want to make sure that you have a fair amount of power. The orbital survey window can be found in the apps bar. In it, there is a drop-down menu for both the body and for the map style. At this moment, we only have data for Kerbin, and the map styles are visual and region. Along with the buttons for zoom in, zoom out, and craft tracking, you also have the ability to hover over top of your craft and it will give you the name, latitude, and longitude. Of course, for those who would like their vessel name or their geographic coordinates to be up permanently, there is buttons to turn those on. And finally, there is the overlay button. This overlays whatever mapping data that you've already accumulated onto the body, both in the map and in the craft view. At the moment, we do not have much to display, so it doesn't show very much, but this does help you localize your map to where you are. So let's do something practical with this. Let's imagine that we have never been to Mimis before, we have no idea where the biomes are, and we want to make it a little bit easier to collect that lovely science. So in this case, we are going to build a craft, we are going to go all the way to Mimis, we are going to scan Mimis with a fleet of scanning probes, and then we are going to land and do a flag in footprints for every biome on Minimus in one trip. And in this case, we're just using mini probes and we're just going to jam those right on top because aerodynamics be damned. But more so because I'm lazy and I couldn't really care about putting this inside a payload fairing. Then off to the launch to get that lovely science. Well, in this case, it's a sandbox test build, so instead we're going to be doing flags and footprints, landings instead. But it does give science in science mode. About 120 science for an entire scan, depending on what body you're surveying. But before we can do that, we need to get to our target. So it's off to planning our intercept and getting us to Minmus. And then we just got to execute our burn to get us to target so that we can start all of our orbital surveying. For safety, we're going to detach one probe from our craft in an offering to the Krakens, just in case there's any system error, leaving us unable to detach the others, and we will alter its course to come into a purely polar intercept. In order to scan an entire target, you have to be in a polar orbit, otherwise you're only going to get a narrow region around the equator. And because I am completely impatient and want results now, we're going to be spam scanning this thing. We will use all the four probes we brought and put them at all inclinations. But first we're going to put our first probe into our preferred polar orbit. 
depending on what scan and size of target you are scanning, you will have a different altitude region that you'll need to be within. The ideal altitude is ideal, but anything outside of the minimum or maximum won't scan at all. After getting two of our probes in orbit, now we're going to get our main craft into orbit before we detach the other two, and then we just have to wait for our scanning to pick our landing spot. Now in the orbital survey window, you can look at any planet body that you have scanned, not just the one that you are in orbit. Every time that you put a orbital scanning probe around a new body, it's automatically going to populate into the list. The scan type for region and visual that you can select at the moment only has those two, but I am hopeful that at one point we will have points of interest, anomalies, elevation, and surface normals or flatness for landing suitability. And it is also worth noting that you do not need to do the scan all in one sitting. You can launch a probe, set it up for scanning, and then leave it. It will continue to scan even if it is not the active craft. Scanning satellites are shown in red, green, or yellow. Green is good. Yellow is outside of the preferred altitude, but still scanning. Red meaning that you're unable to scan either because you're outside of the zone or your craft is out of power. And with all of our probes in place, we can time warp through the scanning process. In science mode, you get scans for each 25% of the scan, four scans in totals, with science for each. On completion of scanning your biomes, you will get a lovely little biome legend to tell you all the names of your biomes. Just remember to have lots of power for both scanning and transmitting your science back. Turning on the overlay feature will show you the data on the target, making it quick and easy to localize the map to the target and know where you are. And I can see one perfect landing spot right there that'll give us access to all of our biomes in one small region. Now, we could land anywhere, but if we land here, we have multiple paths that we can take to acquire all of our biome targets within one small region. And the time has come to set up our descent and get into our first landing spot. In this case, we're going to take our crater biome first. Now, this is not a tutorial on how to land. As you can see here, my method is a little bit more haphazard, or shall we say button mashy. But I set my landing position to where I want to be, then advance time ahead halfway. Then I correct for the rotation that I see. To do that, I burn until my landing position is in the exact mirror position of where it was before. But realizing that I overcorrected, I recorrect the correction with a new correction back in the direction I came. Et voila! We have come to our first position, the crater biome. This mod saves you from landing a stationary craft and missing your biome by a few meters. Before I found the SatScan mod in KSP1, finding all the biomes was a literal nightmare for me. I either sampled some biomes multiple times, or missed a biome by only a kilometer or two. Sometimes the biomes are not visually that different from each other, so like KSP1, I found KSP2 a little lacking without this mod. I don't think SatScan in KSP1 has been updated for quite a few years by its author, so having somebody take this on for KSP2 is wonderful. And out comes Tim for our first flag and footprints, ticking off that first biome for the craters. Now that we have that one taken care of, it's time for Tim to get in the craft and head off for the next biome. Sometimes a crater is its own biome, sometimes it's just part of a biome. And not knowing if your polar caps are north and south, or just ice, this is a really nice mod to have. Later on, if we get the altitude and surface normal or flatness modes, those will help us immensely in picking that perfect landing spot. With altitude being able to help in picking the best parachute landing location, or with surface flatness, landing suitability helping you find that perfect landing spot in a rugged, dangerous terrain like the mountains. And arriving at our second landing location, the Arctic Ice, it's EVA time for Tim to do his second flag and footprints, completing this region. From here, it is not very far to our third biome region, but let's face it, they are all really close. That's the one nice thing about being able to select the right target location. It's all location, location, location. And comparing our map with our research location indicator for the science tool, 
We've confirmed that so far the map is accurate three for three as we come into the sheet ice biome. This could become really important once we get to colony. We're going to need something like this to locate the resources that we need to build said colonies. Also, with some people's missions taking them days to do, putting in all of this work and landing your craft to find out that you're in the same biome you've already done really sucks. Now, having this built in would not mean that every player would have to use it. You can choose not to. And it would also be really cool for those completionists out there. And with our third flag planted, it is time for our last biome. Now, with the overlay all being flat shaded, you definitely don't want to run with overlay on all the time as it receives no shading information, makes gauging distance really, really hard, but it's more important that your data is never hidden in a shadow. Confirming our arrival at the Snowdrift biome, we commit to our landing, and in all this, we have double checked the map and found it to be accurate in all four biomes. Even considering Flight Planner, Alarm Clock, and all the many worthy mods out there, this is my favorite due to the extra science gathering and gameplay that it brings. And now that we have touched down at our final landing location, it's time to plant that last and final flag. This caps off all four of our biomes, every single one hit, and none done twice. So then it is just for liftoff to get Tim back home and complete his mission. Now, as I had mentioned, there are a few updates that I would love to see in this mod over time, being the elevation function, as well as one for ground normal, flatness, or landing safety, whichever name you'd want to apply to it. A good addition would also be a point of interest and anomaly scanner, and I am totally fine with some of these scans not making science. And now we arrive at home after completing our mission and putting flags on all the biomes in Minimus in one trip, all thanks to Orbital Survey by Falky.